Am I the a-hole for getting my boyfriend arrested? I'll just get straight to it. I'm a college student and this is my last semester until medical school. I've never been able to get a loan, so I've worked five and a half years to get this degree because I have to pay out of pocket so it takes way longer. I've worked two, sometimes three jobs at a time and barely had a social life. For this upcoming semester, I reached my goal for tuition, so I quit one of my jobs so I could relax a bit. I was a server slash bartender at two bars and had an office job so I always have cash hidden in my apartment in my closet in a box. And before the semester starts a week or two before, I deposit it so I can pay my tuition. My boyfriend sometimes stays over while I'm there or when I'm not. Since I've been saving for the semester, he is the only one who's been over. I've never told him about the box, but he knows I have to pay for school. Well, yesterday night, I get home to put money in the box because I was gonna deposit it today and it's all gone. I freaked out and tore my apartment up, thinking I put it somewhere else knowing I didn't. I called my boyfriend like crazy. No answer. I didn't sleep last night as I was panicking. Then this morning he finally calls me back. I'm yelling at him about my money and is acting all confused and like I'm crazy. He comes over and I'm still angry. After a while he finally admits he took it so he can borrow and that he'll pay me back. Where the heck is he gonna get $14,000 from in two weeks? I went into a rage and called the police and reported a theft because that is what he did. Well, it's been hours now, but I guess he got his phone called because his family has been blowing my phone up, and his mother has said some really hurtful and racist things to me. They've been harassing me for the past six hours now, and it's stressing me out even more, and I hate that I'm feeling bad for him. But he stole my money that I've been saving for months. His brother did call and he was respectful and said they'll help him pay it back, and I should just go to the police station with him and tell them I want to drop the charges. But I really don't believe them. I could do that and never get my money back still. I don't know what to do, and I hate that I'm contemplating doing this. I'm just really angry and have been crying all freaking day. Now for the top comments. Do not drop the charges. 14,000 is a huge amount of money. His family are lying. They are not going to pay you back. Your boyfriend's first response was to lie. He only admitted a theft afterwards. They will take off and run, and you'll never see him or any of them ever again. Why would you drop the charges? He stole from you. He deserves to go to prison. Also, if you do drop the charges, it's possible that any insurance you have will be nullified. You might be able to borrow money from somewhere, but they would need to see evidence of your ability to save money. You'll need a police report number as part of this application. If his family are banging on about paying the money back, tell them that they can sell one of their cars ASAP and pay you back as courts usually charge interest on money judgments. Not stay home. Not stay home. Break up. Press charges. Get your money. Stop keeping $14,000 in cash in your closet. I'm not saying she deserves it. She clearly doesn't. But it seems like an unnecessary risk with no upside. Not stay home. Very sorry that happened to you. You could tell them you'll drop the charges as soon as you get your $14,000 back. And then don't drop the charges. Just block them all and move on. Do not drop the charges. He stole from you and you have no guarantee that the money will come back. If his family really want to help, they can pay the money back to you so they can tell the judge he has made restitution for a better sentence. The trust in this relationship has gone out the door and it is over. Block his family on your phone. You do not need their abuse. Before you do, if you have any messages from them, save them and ask the police for an apprehended violence order to prevent them from mistreating and threatening you. This. OP, please pay attention to this. Also, I'm so sorry this happened to you. In addition to dealing with the police, etc., reach out to the administration at your school and let them know what happened. Hopefully, they'll be compassionate and at the very least, defer your tuition payment date so you can start classes as planned without paying late fees on your tuition. Who knows, maybe there are scholarship dollars or a bursary they can help you out with. Also, I am so incredibly proud of you. Working your way through school like that is not easy. And you did it. I've already made an appointment with my advisor and financial aid for Monday. I'm hoping they don't drop my classes. Thank you for the kind words. It's been hard, but I know the end result will be worth it. Next story. Am I the a-hole for calling my ex-wife spiteful selfish jerk? After she tried to convince me to sell our late son's apartment? I'm 54 male, my ex-wife is 52 female. We have been divorced for over 15 years. We had a son together, Michael, who passed away this May at 22 years old. He was a firefighter and died at a job. 
Michael's girlfriend Ilhan is 21 female and is pregnant, due in October. Her very conservative parents kicked her out for getting pregnant outside of their religion. My ex was never fond of Ilhan and very reluctantly agreed to share the cost of an apartment with me when I said we should help them out with a deposit and the first few payments for their own place. This was just weeks before Michael died. Ilhan stayed in the apartment after his death. I told her already I'd help out in any way I can. My ex approached me a few weeks ago and asked me to sell the apartment and get our money back. I told her Ilhan really needs it and deserves our help. We both have more than enough money. My ex asked me to sell many times in the past few weeks. Last week, we got into a fight about Michael's estate. She wants to sue Ilhan because she doesn't think she should get anything. She again asked me to sell the apartment. It's still in both our names. I told her I'll just pay her for her share of the apartment and let that be. She gets her money then, but she said she doesn't think Ilhan should have the apartment. I told her she's a spiteful and selfish a-hole who cares about the money, and not her daughter-in-law and grandkid who literally will never know his dad. She cried, called me an a-hole and said I am insensitive about her loss. Not the a-hole. Morally, and I'd imagine legally, Michael's unborn child is entitled to Michael's estate over anyone else. The estate, yes. But the apartment is in my and my ex's name, so it's not part of the estate. Morally, it's 100% belongs to Ilhan and the baby. Not the a-hole, at all. You even offered to buy your ex out so you can protect your daughter-in-law and grandchild. If your ex doesn't take you up on that, it will be fairly obvious that is not actually about the money, but about your ex's prejudice towards Ilhan. Hasn't Ilhan been through enough? Kicked out of her family, lost her partner while she's pregnant. Now your ex wants her to be homeless? That's messed up. You are a wonderful father, and you are honoring your son's memory by helping out Ilhan. Not day haul in any way, shape, or form. I'm so sorry for your loss. I really hope that having Ilhan and your grandchild in your life will be a healing presence for you. Thank you. She's an amazing young woman. And I'm sure will be an exceptional mom to a lucky little one. And you, sir, will be a great grandfather to your grandson. He will grow up knowing that his grandfather will always have his back and protect him and his mother. He will love you and look up to you. Not day haul, brother. Your ex is either really going through it rough or they're truly awful. I hope it's the first one. I got no context for losing an adult child. But my intuition is that if I lost someone like that for my life, and the person they loved can still be in my life, I would take that opportunity all day and twice on Sundays. I would cherish it. Losing Michael was by far the worst experience of my life. And I can say with complete certainty that nothing will ever come close. Having Ilhan here... Having had her support through this time has been life-saving. And knowing that in a few months, a little bit of my Michael will come back to life makes me completely smitten. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to put my fiancé on the house title after he kept handing me empty pants as a prank? I, female 34, have been with my fiancé, male 37, for three years. Getting married before the end of this year and recently moved in the house that I inherited from my mom. The house is in my name, and it took a lot of talking and convincing from him to have his name on a title as well. Now, honestly, part of me doesn't think this is a good idea, at least not right now, maybe after marriage? But anyway, I've decided to go ahead and put his name on a title so he could go ahead and start contributing towards mortgage more and lighten my burden a little bit. We've made appointments, decided on which form of ownership we were basing this on. When it was time for me to sign the deed, my fiancé stopped me and gave me a pen saying this pen was his lucky pen and told me to use it to sign the deed. I took it and tried to sign, but turned out it was empty. He was like, oh, I must have forgotten, while laughing, and then pulled out his other lucky pen. I took it, tried to sign, and that one too was empty. Honestly, seeing how he was laughing, I figured he was messing with me, but he swore he wasn't and pulled out another one of his lucky pens. I tried that one too, and it was empty. My fiancé started cackling, and I felt humiliated, especially with how the gentleman next to him was staring. I got angry and asked him what that was about, and he said it was a prank. I asked, really? Did you really think this was a time for pranks? He was like, it's alright, you can use a real pen now. I pushed the paper away and said, you know what, never mind, because I no longer want you on the deed. He lost it completely, saying we had a deal and I can't back out of it just like that, and that it was a stupid joke that I took too seriously. We had an argument, and I refused to sign a deed, at least not then and there. 
At home, he blew up again, saying I was the one who delayed the process and that he already gave me a real pen and all I had to do was sign the damn paper and get it over with. He accused me of looking for an excuse not to have him on the deed and started a silent treatment saying there's nothing to say till those papers are signed. Did I really take this too seriously? Now for the top comments. Not today, home. Red flags all over. 1. He pressured you into putting him on a deed? That's weird unless he has selfish motives. My husband literally suggested he not be on the title to my car to maybe help with the insurance costs. Because we're gonna be married anyway. Why does it matter? 2. He is very immature. You don't behave like that at a serious time like that. He wasted everyone's time. 3. He blew up at you for correctly chastising him instead of acknowledging his own fault and apologizing. For his giving you the silent treatment, which is an extremely toxic thing in relationships. And yet again, immature. 5. He's more interested in getting access to your property than how you felt in the situation. Hun, I implore you to not put him on a deed. And depending on if this behavior is normal for him, I'd give a long and hard thought on if this is really what you want for your future. Not to mention that he went out of his way to humiliate and belittle her publicly when it came time to signing. It wasn't just a prank. It was an extremely petty way for him to try and assert power over her and make her look and feel like the lesser person in the arrangement when she is, in fact, the opposite. This reminded me of my paternal grandfather. He would pull crap like this and act like it was funny. He was also an abusive a-hole to my grandmother physically and verbally. He was always belittling her and treating her like she was stupid. She was miserable until she ended up in a nursing home after breaking her arm. She refused to cooperate with physical therapy because then she couldn't go home. She literally was happier there than living with him. Hope you don't end up like my grandma. Not the a-hole. You're the a-hole to yourself. He's gonna take half of your house when you break up. Don't do it. Agree. It's like you have a safe full of money in your house and he's asking you to hand over half. You're not even married and this was yours alone before you being a couple. This is not something you built together. It's yours. Don't do it. Yep, they shouldn't be signing a deed. They should be signing a prenup that says the house is hers and maybe they will share in any appreciation since he will be financially invested. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to financially contribute to my boyfriend's home repairs even though I live with him? I, 25, female, live with my boyfriend, 28, male. I'm in grad school and work from home full-time. He works full-time. I make 60000 a year. He makes 200000 a year. We split bill 70-30. 20% of my income goes to paying for grad school since I have a bartending side gig that I use to cover the expenses of it. We moved in together into an apartment that we both chose, and things were fine. But then when the housing market started getting really bad, he got anxious about not having property in his name and bought one. I didn't really care since we're not married and he can do whatever he wants with his money. Forward a few months and our lease is ending and he waits until three days before to tell me we have to move out. They already leased our units because he didn't renew the lease. And we move into the townhouse he bought. I'm an avid DIYer. And my mom is a general contractor and previously an architectural engineer. So I've done tons of home improvement jobs at my mom's house and my childhood home on my own. Kitchen, bathroom, backyard, flooring renovations, etc. My boyfriend is now upset because I told him that not only will I not do any of that at his place, that is only in his name, as it should be, I also won't financially contribute to renovations. It would be different if there was structural damage or things in need of fixing, but he just wants updates because the townhouse has all of the early 90s finishes. I have enough on my plate right now with both jobs, grad school and hell out. I'm not going to play Bob the Builder in my small amount of downtime, especially when I will never profit from it. He said I'm selfish, I don't care about him and has been acting weird since. Am I the a-hole? Edit. We split all bills 70-30. I pay 30% of every single bill, including mortgage, HOA, and property taxes, outside of grocery and pet care, which I pay 100% of. This doesn't include our personal bills such as car payments, slash insurance, slash health insurance, etc. I did consider marriage and a future together before the surprise move. Now I'm not as sure. I've told him that, and before we ever closed on a property, we discussed that I would not have anything to do with the rehab projects outside of recommending contractors and materials because I have too much on my plate. Half of his work time is spent golfing to network. I think this is the perfect time for him to learn a new skill himself. 
I didn't have a say in the location. Style Edge anything regarding the townhouse. I don't consider it ours in any way, shape, or form. It's in a city where I'm an extreme minority. And I've already made it clear that I'm not willing to live here more than two years. Not stay home. He sprung a move on you with three days' notice? He's asking you to financially contribute to a property you don't have any stake in? He's calling you selfish when he makes triple your salary and you're in school and working full-time. Be careful, OP. Yeah. I've told my mom everything so that she knows if I ask for money to move out in the case of an emergency, we have a plan set up. I don't know. Ever since the last minute's move out, I haven't trusted him very much. He claims he just forgot to renew the lease, and with the price hike our apartment did, it only made sense to move. I agreed at the moment because I don't want to think about it and had exams, and it does save us both more money. But I would never agree to live with a man on a property they own in any other case. He claims he just forgot to renew the lease but also was simultaneously purchasing a condo at the same time he was forgetting to renew the lease? I'd never once mentioned finding a lender, tracking down all his pay stubs for pre-approval, touring houses, putting in an offer, or scheduling an inspection? Girl, your mistrust is well-placed. I don't know what his endgame is here, other than assuming he had a built-in free contractor, but I'm side-eyeing him hard. Not stay home. You have a ton on your plate already. And to be honest, it's his place. He could tell you to leave tomorrow and you'd be out the money and the work. Exactly. That's why I refuse to. With my mom's properties, it's different. I'm her only child and they'll be mine one day no matter what. And if we break up, I have a place to go live rent-free. But if I helped to the percent that he wanted, I wouldn't even be able to save any money. It would literally leave me with less than $250 a month to spend. 